to this special episode of Green Enterprise in celebration of Women's History Month. I'm Nicole Callier. I'm your special guest host for this episode of Black Women in Cannabis Journalism. And I'm excited to have a special discussion today with another Black woman who is a leading writer and emerging editor in the cannabis industry. Today I have with me Lanisha Watson, who like myself is a Black woman covering the development of cannabis business, news and social advocacy. Lanisha, before we jump into our uh, discussion today about our cannabis careers and backgrounds, I would love for you to just give us our viewers a brief history of your professional background uh, before you transition into cannabis. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Lanisha Watson. I am the founder of Vibrant World, which is a creative production agency, and we mainly work in the cannabis space, working with different brands and helping them tell more diverse stories. Before I got into cannabis, I was just, just wandering around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I had just, well, I hadn't just graduated, but I had graduated from FAMU in 2016 with an English degree. It really didn't have like any direction. So I had been trying out different um, niches when it comes to journalism. I had did self-development. I had did some, um, some, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I had uh, did some government work, uh, had worked with CGR uh, one time, but I just really didn't know what I was doing until I went to Yale in the summer of 2008. 18, I believe. Um, it was for a week. Uh, it was Yale's Thread uh, Boot Camp, and I met so many different people who worked in various parts of media, from illustrators to producers to editors at some of the biggest magazines in the country, and one of my mentors was actually a cannabis investigative journalist, and I was like, that's so interesting. Um, that's something that I had never heard of, a niche that I definitely didn't think was something that I could do as a black woman, but I'm definitely into like pushing the boundaries. So that weekend I began to like ideate, like how can I get into the cannabis space? Because she made it seem so interesting. And I was a heavy cannabis user when I was in school to help control my anxiety. And it was one way that I always felt that I could really connect with my true self. And that weekend at Yale, I came up with the idea for high folks, um, which was a super dope concept. I just wanted to know like why um, black people specifically were using cannabis because when we look at all these cannabis stories it's never like black people in you know talking about their relationship with the plant um and so I ended up pitching my idea to high times and they loved it and that's basically how I found my way into the cannabis space so before that, I was just like a lost soul, just trying to figure out what I wanted. I'm pretty young, so <laughs> I just was like, I just want to do something fun. I only have one life. I don't want to like spend it writing about stuff that I really don't care about. Um, and in doing the work in cannabis, I've really been able to deepen my own relationship with the plant and really explore my own creativity. So I think it was the best choice. Um, it's something I've stuck with, um, which is, you know, it's really in this world there's so much going on so many options but cannabis has really like opened up my heart to just being a better writer and a better editor so I definitely think that everything that led me to this point was divine and um just being here is I, I do feel truly blessed to like be able to do what I do oh, that's awesome sis. and I related to your story on so many levels um just like how I got into the cannabis industry myself so right out of college. So I'm from Seattle, um, went to college out there, went to the University of Washington and predominantly white institution, like had a great experience, but like yourself also dealt with like anxiety, um, just trying to like tr channel that space. Um, so definitely living in Seattle um, in college when cannabis was legalized in Washington after I graduated got into a government internship, um, was working for like a city, doing like some communications type stuff. It was cool, but definitely not where I really wanted to like see myself. Um, and I saw an internship at Leafly and it was kind of like when they were still in their, you know, emerging startup phases. And again, I'm still in Seattle. So they're based in Seattle and was at my internship and it was kind of, um, ending or I could either continue it or like figure out kind of what I wanted to do. And I, applied for this internship at Leafly and interviewed, um, got it, told the people at the government internship, deuces, I'm <laughs> out. 
And that summer um, just actually started intern for them. So working in like the newsroom um, with other editors, with their whole team and really, you know, just learned a lot. Um, and that's kind of like how I got started as well. So interning for them, doing a lot of pop culture type stuff um, and, you know, didn't really get an opportunity to continue my writing there as like an editor, an associate editor, or anything like that. So my internship ended, unfortunately, or that's what I thought at the time, you know, so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, what am I going to do next? But I enjoyed just the, the topics that I was covering. Like, um, it was even, it was like pop culture and like black celebrities and cannabis. That's what, you know, they were interested in publishing it. I just felt like, okay, that's cool. I'm kind of interested in that. So after the internship ended, I just started, had a portfolio at that point, kind of just started pitching my work to other websites. You know, I was thankful to be in Washington where it's legal. So a lot of people were looking for branding, marketing, all that type of stuff. Um, so dope magazines, pitched them, started working with them and kind of just built my name up from there. So um, yeah, and then today, 2021, still um, in the space, but definitely have transitioned into doing more things like sales, but still using like storytelling at, I feel like as a foundation for everything. Um, so yeah, I just feel like, and we're gonna talk about this more in our discussion, just like how our experiences as writers, um, you know, have transitioned, like what opportunities it's brought us and kind of like how we can um, you know, give that knowledge to other people who may be interested in, mm -hmm. in writing or creative consultancy like you're doing with your agency because it is a huge opportunity. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited for us to connect and see that we have super similarities in our background. Yeah. <laughs> We're We're so, I'm like, I'm sure, um, you work uh, for a government agency. When I graduated, I ended up working for the state of Florida for a couple oh, of months as like a brand ambassador of the Department of Health. And I was like, that's a job. It's just, uh, <laughs> I want something new. <laughs> Day, I would be like man I was like there has to be something better but yeah. um you know and yeah other opportunities came after Leafly, Dope, Estro Hayes, The Root, Thrillist and I know you've been in several publications too you know so um tell me a little bit more about like where you've actually been featured and um I know you already talked about where you're what you're currently doing now. Well I've been featured in Miss Grass. I uh, wrote a couple pieces for them about social equity, about um, women getting into the cannabis space, profiling different women in the cannabis space. Um, I've worked with the Emerald Magazine, um, which was a uh, cool high times uh, in Skunk Magazine. So I've only worked with a few publications, but most of my work has been like profiling um, different cannabis, just different black folk in the cannabis space. Um, and also um, talking about social equity issues. And then right now I'm working with uh, Kaliva as a guest editor for the Fresh Perspectives Laws, which has been um, really fun. Um, it's allowed me to really expand what I want to do as an editor and bring different voices into the cannabis space. I don't think I'm the best writer, but I do um, think I can craft a really great story. So my goal with this project has been to like hire different black writers um, and allow them to tell the story and then just be a guide for them, which is truly what I love to do. And it's really been like an awesome opportunity. I love that. And it connects with so much with just your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, what are some differences, I guess, from approaching a cannabis journalism? Like we could have covered any, you know, in journalism, they say mm -hmm. B. So we could have covered any topic. Um, why for you why cannabis journey you know in college like I stated earlier I had a really um interesting relationship with the plant it really did like help me deal with just being a college student not knowing what I wanted being anxious all the time and when I got out of college I think I I started to spiral a little bit um because I felt like I didn't have any direction so cannabis was always like a guide for me um so whenever I felt like I'm just stressed. Let me like smoke a blunt. Let me like try to like figure out, you know, my next steps in 
candidates being a guy when I found out that there was an opportunity to write about the plan and then thinking that like I'm not the only black girl who is anxious I'm not the only black girl who was depressed let me you know write about this and it makes sense coming from a place where I was doing like a lot of self-development work I had wrote for shine text um a lot about like different things that you know we should be aware as women of color. So it just kind of made sense to make this transition into the cannabis space and to, you know, write about it. It I it definitely has like morphed into a way that I did it. I never thought that writing about like social equity issues I always thought that I would just be profiling different you know just different people getting to know people and paint a picture of them with my words but I never thought I would like transition into like people wanting to know my opinion on social equity um, which is super interesting but it makes a lot of sense because when we talk about social equity and we talk about like people of color having access to this plan um, being a journalist like I have the opportunity to tell that story and capture like this moment that we're in in the black cannabis space but also to like make people who are making decisions about cannabis and who has access to it aware that they may not always be looking at the picture very clearly um, so it's definitely been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting journey in the cannabis space, but it always like makes sense because we need access to wellness. And if I could like use the cannabis plant to like help me feel good and like, you know, make me feel better about whatever I'm going through, then I definitely think that by telling this story, more Black people will be comfortable with using cannabis, whether they be, you know, a CEO or, you know, just, you know, building up their business, they would be more comfortable using the plant as a form of healing and as a guide throughout their day um so I do feel like I do have like this privilege because I can write about it and I do understand that um getting well helping black people be aware of this plan is really important so I definitely don't take like what I do for granted absolutely mm -hmm. and yeah definitely a lot of people don't tie in cannabis consumption with mental health um, and I think that's, you know, a huge issue. And I think too, you know, the power of us just being in the position to be journalists, like we can really shed light on those issues and, and um, just kind of get away from that like stoner archetype where people are just lazy partying, like no, people are really using this to their day-to-day -day health and using it almost like a, like you would a multivitamin or mm -hmm. a prescription for something else, you know? So based on that, like what are your opinions on the differences of, because I know you cover pop culture as well, right? And mm -hmm. celebrity news with uh, cannabis, which we're hearing more about every day, just as it's yeah. emerging. Um, so what would you say are the differences between covering like pop culture and like covering cannabis as a, as a social issue? Do you kind of have to like transition as a writer when you're kind of, dip, you know, writing these two different topics or covering these two different um, issues? Well, what I've during quarantine, I would say that I've just spent a lot of time in my silo learning, um, which means I've like spent a lot of time just like dissecting language. And so the way I understand cannabis um, as far as like writing is totally different than how I used to understand it when I was doing a lot more pop culture work. And I would say when writing about cannabis, you really do have to be like very delicate about what you're saying. You have to be very mindful about what you're writing about. Um, there is a lot of research out there um, that you have to be aware of. Um, and talking to like a lot of different professionals in the industry, it's just different. It's just, it's a way, it's way more informative. Like, yeah, I could talk about you know, any celebrity and them getting into the cannabis industry and what that means on a pop culture level. But I think like when we talk about like social equity issues, like you have to be like really informative. And I think there's a lot of empathy that you have to have like a lot of empathy because sometimes when we do talk about social equity, we may not experience everything that everybody else is going through as far as like barriers to entry. Um, so having like an open heart and an open mind is uh, very important and being able to relate to people and being willing to like allow people to be vulnerable and in my time profiling different people you know just allowing them to like tell their story without me judging them has allowed me to learn so much about 
cannabis, about the space that we're in and about what needs to be done. So a lot of the messages that I find myself curating right now is like, how do we build a better future generations from now through social equity? And it allows me to be like super imaginative and, you know, because I, I feel like when we talk about social equity, the conversation kind of stops somewhere. But with, you know, the work that I do, you, it allows me to imagine a better future generations from now. Um, what will, how will social equity affect people's grandchildren, their great grandchildren? Um, and then I also think writing about cannabis allows us to personify Mary Jane as an actual character. And I feel like it's my job to bring her voice into the story because I don't I don't want us to continue to talk about her like she is just an object, that she's just something to be consumed. I literally see her as like this person that is, you know, speaking through me and my work who I am advocating for. So I think understanding like who Mary Jane is and the role she plays in your life when you do begin to do this work is really important because I, I think it adds more depth to your voice and it adds a lot more understanding when you approach a social equity, social justice issue versus like when you're just talking about a pop culture issue though pop culture issues can be they can be in depth but um, they don't carry the same type of weight that social equity issues and social justice issues do. Definitely. And I relate to that a lot because like I said, I got started doing a lot more pop culture stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people want to hear about. Everybody yeah. doesn't want to hear about the disparities um, in the legal cannabis industry, how there's a lot more, you know, Black people and Latino people, people of color in general still in prison for cannabis. You know, while of course there's people who are profiting off of it. So yeah, you definitely have to take that, make that transition. And even for me, I was a little bit nervous, like coming from mm -hmm. that pop culture side to be like, okay, I'm going to have to start looking at things from more of a, um, a governmental legis uh, legislators lens, you know what I mean? Something like that. Um, but lobbying and all of that is so important in cannabis. Mm -hmm. So I think it really goes hand in hand. Like you can't be um, in the cannabis industry and really not be a, a social advocate, you know, of, of change with the plant, with just how people view the plant. So it, it absolutely does go hand in hand. I will also add that when you are writing about these issues, you have to look at everything you write as a resource that right. um, maybe that these legislatures can like pull up your article and maybe find people to like talk to and you know get their perspective on like why this change is so important so that's another way like everything you're writing is a resource everything you're producing is a resource and can be used to help shift the narrative and I think that's the goal like let's change the story because it's so I always say Mary Jane is like tired of like all this stuff that we say about her she's like it's not true <laughs> um so let's like focus on like telling a better story about like who Mary Jane is and like what role she plays in like helping us like create a better world. Um, how is like she encouraging us to have more diverse conversations and to connect with people outside of like who we would normally, you know, connect with. I would say that my introduction into cannabis really did open my eyes to, you know, medical marijuana and why people need access to medical marijuana why we should be you know making sure that compassionate care programs are in place and that's just for me like interviewing this woman I met on Instagram like I'm like wow I didn't know any of this and you know just talking to people allowed me to open my mind to why we like you said we all we can't be in the space and not be social advocates exactly and I think too like from a from our perspective as journalists, right? We're, we're documenting exactly what you said. People are looking to our articles and the work that we're putting out as really like they're kind of some, for some people, their baseline foundational knowledge about cannabis and the plant. So we do carry um, this responsibility definitely as storytellers, as journalists um, to just be, you know, mindful in the work that, you know, what we're putting out into the universe, into the online, because um, people are, definitely, you know, we should, like you said, to make change, to make decisions within their own life and things of that nature. So I definitely, mm -hmm. I hear you on that. Um, I did want to ask, I know you're talking about you, some of your interviews and how you interviewed a woman on Instagram. 
Um, do you have a favorite person that you have profiled in the industry? Yes. So the woman that I mentioned, yeah, uh, Lakia, Lakia Gucci, she's this woman that I met on Instagram. And this was when I was in the process of uh, getting ready to start working with High Times. And I, uh, <laughs> before I reached out to them, I actually wrote like a fake article just to show them like what this would look like. Um, and it's so weird. I ended up writing this article about this like random lesbian couple in, it, in California. And I ended up going on Instagram looking for some won the interview and I came across Lakia and Lakia was um she's a lesbian uh her and her partner like work in tandem in this space and I'm like oh wow this is just like my first story this is my fake story that I wrote this must be divine and when I got to know Lakia I was like wow like your story is so in-depth she um is a muscular dystrophy uh patient she lives in Philadelphia and she was just telling her that she had to like face trying to access medical marijuana in Delaware where she was from and how she had to move around a lot. But cannabis was like what saved her from going to hospice and you know what saved her from ultimately like losing her life to muscular dystrophy. And you know, I talked to Lakia to this day and it, <laughs> just like her relationship with cannabis, I think is a model that we all should follow, like allowing can us to use cannabis for lifestyle changes, uh, which is really beautiful. And she is such an advocate for medical patients um, getting access to really good, high quality medicine, which I think is really beautiful. And the first time I met her was actually in Atlanta at a 420 dinner. It's my first time we having a 420 dinner. I only made it through the first two courses. But during that night when I met Lakia, she was in a wheelchair. And within like the first two courses, she was up and she was walking. And my mind was like blown. I'm like, oh my goodness. This is what I thought I was just like using this to just like, you know, calm my nerves down. But I had never understood the magnitude of like what cannabis could do and how it could heal people. So seeing her up and about and feeling good, she was dancing, just like all this stuff. I'm like, wow, like cannabis is so amazing. And that night I was just like, I have to like work in this space. Like I have to like help more, um, more black people and more people of color get access to this plant because I know so many people who are like on a cocktail of like prescription medicine and they still well and me being able to experience the Kia and you know what she had been going through and how she had allowed and found how she had found cannabis um to you know help her heal herself um it was just like truly amazing and that's always gonna be like my favorite person <laughs> and, and like my favorite story because it truly was like and just meeting her was like an eye-opening experience and every day she affirms to me that this is like what I'm supposed to be doing and that you know that the work I'm doing is valid because you know, writing that article about her, it made her feel good. It made her feel like, you know, she made the right choice of, you know, sticking, becoming a cannabis advocate, um, especially in an area where there isn't high quality medicine. And a lot of people coming from where we come from, we still have to be like, hey, you know, can and, you know, having to like carry testimonies with us to make sure that they understand that can cannabis can't hurt you. So, no, the key is amazing. Oh, that's awesome. That's a beautiful story. I love that. I love that. It's on social equity and cannabis. So what are your thoughts on just the current state of affairs of social equity and cannabis present day? Um, I think we should definitely be looking at social equity through a global through a global eye, I uh, talked to a woman in South Africa not too long ago. She she has a, a magazine, a cannabis magazine, and we we're talking like the South African uh, cannabis industry. And when she was talking to me, I'm like, wow, that sounds like America. <laughs> you know, people, you know, they it's decriminalized so people can um, smoke it. They can do home grow. And she told me this story about this woman on the side of the road who was selling weed to try to like make ends meet. And she was a white woman and she said that, you know, it's definitely not fair for me as a white woman to have to be able to access this industry so easily. And I know that like there's this white, this where there is this woman, this black woman on the side of the road who is selling weed just to make ends meet. And I know that for her to like have fair access 
access to the industry, you know, is, is impossible. Um, and I think like hearing that story and then also knowing about like what's going on in America, I'm like, wow, we should really, I think if we broaden our view of like what is going on across the world, it will really help us hone in on what's going on here. But then I also think with more states becoming legal, we're going to be able to look more into to um, these black, these, you know, disproportionately impacted communities and really see how the war on drugs has impacted people's lives. And sometimes it's not as obvious as you think it is. That's why we need to talk to people more. But I think when, the more, excuse me, the more, the more we like are able to like look into these different states and see how these communities look, I think we'll be able to like really see the need for social equity looking at going and looking into the communities of these newly newly legalized states is really going to like help us really understand the important need for social equity and allow us to really see what these different communities need um because we can look at like what's going on in California because like California you know is you know one of the most popular legal states so we always and people in California are always the ones like having the social equity conversation but you know when Florida becomes legal like well truly like, you can come look at my neighborhood come look at you know where I grew up and you'll be able to see like how you know we have it you know had access to the things that we need the resources that we need to become um, better communities and for me social equity is about what does the world look like two, three, four generations from now? You know, what decisions will cannabis legalization allow us to make? What, you know, better life choices will cannabis legalization allow us to make? So I think looking at cannabis uh, social equity from a global perspective, allowing us to look at these different, you know, countries and see what they have going on will allow us wants to have more perspective here and know that this isn't just a us issue unfortunately it's happening all over the world and then allowing when as these more states become legal just looking at these people and looking at they sto their stories and listening to them so that we can like create a better world through cannabis legalization yes to all that sis like we definitely got to look at it from a global perspective um yeah, and just see how we can implement change within, mm -hmm. you know, every community. But I think it's going to definitely be a unified action for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and just some of the favorite articles that I've written, some of the favorite work that I've done, it's definitely been the profiles of Black and Brown people, which is a, predominantly most of my work. It does feature around just highlighting Black women, Black men, you know, trans women, uh, LGBTQIA community um, in cannabis. So I would say the my favorite person that I've definitely interviewed that I stay in contact with now, I mean, all the people I've interviewed, I, I love, like, we're cool. Those are like my family. Um, but I would just say Shayun Adedeji. So uh, out of Oregon, youngest Black man in America to own a cannabis industry, First started working with him when I first started writing with Estro Hayes, um, did a piece on him about just his key takeaways to just how he got into the industry. Um, and then from there, we did a, a piece for Mary Jane, which is Snoop's platform, which I really think just set everything off. You know what I mean? I feel like when we wrote that piece, it was really just having a conversation about um, why he has like an all black executive team or why um, he decided to get involved in the cannabis industry. And that article to this day still goes up, still, you know, still get love from it. And I just think that that's, um, you know, as journalists, that's something that we all, we want to do. We want mm -hmm. our articles to get shared. We want to see them reposted on Instagram um, and all of that. And I think too, it was just an authentic article. Like, our conversations he's always the type of person that's you know whoever he's talking to he's always going to give you some real great advice about just his perspective in the industry uh his obstacles he'll always be transparent um so it's just dope to kind of see people from the beginning and be and I'm sure you understand this to kind of be part of their journey like mm -hmm. you know write that first article about them or and just see them like level up so uh, Shayun's definitely my guy. He knows um, Lizzie Jeff, written about her initially for Estro Hay. So like a lot of these people, like 
just like when I was getting started, just hustling, trying to just get, you know, any article or just talk to anybody, you know, I was just so open just to be able to learn from these people like, okay, how did you get into the industry? Like, how are you building your brand? How are you doing all of this? And people were always um, just open to have a conversation. I think that that's another thing that people should know who are trying to get into the space. Like people are going to be so open to having a conversation with you about whatever you're trying to do, whether it's marketing, writing, actually owning a dispensary, growing, accounting, whatever law, like whatever you want to do, just have that conversation, like be open enough to pitch your ideas and just have that convo. But yeah, Lizzie Jeff, I was saying like, just have an opportunity to talk to her when she was like bud tending. And now she's got, you know, probably over 50,000 followers doing events all over the country. Um, when she comes to Atlanta, you know, it's all love. I'll go to Cali and see her you know of course pre-COVID but like yeah it's just like having those relationships with these people and um just seeing them shine and grind I feel like that's so rewarding as a journalist and just to know it's like our people that we're highlighting and just seeing them succeed and be on this trajectory um so. and just to know that we're at the beginning of the industry so the future is has so much you know there's so many possibilities and this is just like we're still in the infancy of the industry so you know Shayun's doing great right now just imagine you know what his platform and what his business will look like you know five ten years from now it is really exciting it is very exciting it's very exciting and it's yeah it's dope to see them and yeah for them to just show love and you know for us to all you know the goal I think is for us to all to just do business one day like if they're looking for marketing and creative services call you like you know what I mean that's what I think like ultimately the goal should be to like have a unified effort where we could reach out to every one of us who are black and brown for creative services for health for marketing for distribution whatever like I think that's um, the ultimate goal. And I think people like Shayun that are in those positions now would tell you the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. um, let's all build and then let's all get to the top and like look back and really just be able to um, put each other in positions where we can do this for, for generations to come and feed our family. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to touch base as well on What's, what's your 2021 looking like? Like, what, what do you have planned for this year? You know, we uh, think this year, I'm really focused on, like, shifting the story that we talk, tell about uh, Mary Jane. Um, I really do want to personify her and bring her in on the conversation. So my first, you know, t uh, jab at that was uh, what we did for Black History Month with Kaliba. We did letters to Mary Jane, which I thought was, like, really dope because we never, you know, nobody's ever, like, you know, I appreciate Mary Jane so much. Let me, like, write a letter to her. And for me, that was, like, my way of saying, let's change the conversation let the you know let's look at her let black people or people of color be the ones to be like I appreciate cannabis because um and for the rest of the year my you know focus is really personifying that story and like showing gratitude to the plant um especially from uh, people of color because with about people of color in the relationship they have with King, this usually is uh, pretty sad. Um, and this year, I definitely want to, you know, change that direction and make it a more positive one. Um, so a lot of the work that I'm doing is, you know, Letters to Mary Jane. We have a couple more of those coming up for Black for 420, which is like really dope. And I am working on producing a magazine that will come out later this year that will feature, you know, just dope interviews, um, fun stuff you can do. Uh, cannabis is all about like having fun and, you know, allowing it to like heal your, you know, heal you and like make you feel good, but also allowing you to like elevate like your consciousness and just like see things from a different perspective. So the goal is to like create a lot of content that allows us to like look at cannabis through a more creative eye. And I definitely um, plan on pulling on like a lot of black creatives over the last year. I've been able to, you know, work with journalists in Puerto Rico and Oakland in, um, in LA, just all across the globe, which has been really fun. And I really want to pull on some more of the uh, emerging voices that are coming up in the cannabis space. Yes, I love that. I'm excited to see all thank that you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? 
Yeah, this year, I mean, for me, content, it's all about, I guess, just continue to tell those stories, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, too, for me, storytelling, I feel like it's something that's going to take me, whether I'm creating content, whether I'm storytelling, telling the story of a brand. Um, I just want to be able to move in, in 2021, be able to do that um, for cannabis. So whether that's doing more things with product and like branding and just like how to like the brand archetype and architecture behind that type of thing so look for more like branding products coming from nicole um coming from terpene trap queen you guys know that's my my little alias and um you know for me it's just all about just that creative entrepreneurship cannabis is definitely like my first love journalism is you know definitely what got me into cannabis but definitely just look forward to just uh, doing other things like um, as far as branding and like sales and, and all of that. Because like I said earlier, storytelling and being able to tell a story um, to get people to just, you know, understand a brand to have that credibility is, you know, in everything that we do. So yeah, just want to continue to uh, do projects like that in 2021 continue to, of course, do interviews with Black entrepreneurs in the space, um, move to Atlanta. Um, so definitely, I want to like look at it from a different lens. And I know you can help me with that, sis, being out in Florida, because people don't understand. I know it's not like legal out in Florida in like Georgia, but we have a crazy cannabis scene. And I think if we're talking about social equity and advocacy, like we definitely need to be looking at Southern states where we have huge high populations of people in jail not being able to get certain services because of their marijuana conviction so I know it's legal in Cali and all these other states in Washington where I'm from but like we got to start doing some work out here in the south where um that's where we're really going to be able to um just see black and brown people really um thrive I think like from a, an industry where they were really burdened like be, be able to have their own cannabis or CBD dispensaries be able to um you know white label your own hemp pre-roll products like there's so much like that we can be educating our people in like um the south or other locations that aren't legalized to really get them kind of in framework for whenever it does happen um, so I just want to start doing that as well. Like if I got to start lobbying, if I have to start, you know, writing some, you know, whatever, use my, my services and my talents as a writer, um, you know, but maybe outside of the traditional freelancing or things that I've been doing. So look forward to that in 2021 and, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, that's really dope. That's really dope. I like what you're saying, definitely about uh, the South. I feel like once we get legal cannabis in the South, it's going to be a game changer. Um, and, you know, having Black people in the South have access to cannabis, it's truly, truly, I think, uh, a testament to like a shift in the culture of America. Because um, Black people in the South ain't never had nothing. So <laughs> for yeah. us to have access to uh, cannabis um, and fair access and with all the wrongs being righted, I think um, that would truly signify a shift in like what it means to, you know, be in America and be successful. I think the story will definitely start to change then. So, no, I agree with everything you're doing and I'm so excited <laughs> to watch you. Awesome. You gotta connect to this because I'm gonna need your yeah. help. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and you're in Atlanta? Yes, I'm in Atlanta okay. right now. Okay, no. Can they find you at where can they find Lanisha? Where they can they uh, follow your business? How can we stay connected with you? You can um, connect with me on Instagram at Vibrant World. I try to keep it up to date about all the different things that we have going on. Um, and like I said, right now, we're really heavily working with Kaliba, trying to produce stuff for 420 right now. So if you want to read any of the blog posts that we produce with them, just go to, go to Vibrant World on Instagram and you'll be able to have access to the full Fresh Perspectives blog. Um, and then over the next couple of weeks, I will be updating it. Um, for April, we're actually going to be doing free resumes. There are a lot of uh, cannabis positions down here in Florida. So if you are in Florida and you're looking for a job, 
in the cannabis resumes in April, until the whole month of April, just to celebrate uh, 420, which is like really dope. Um, so yeah, so, but if you want to connect with us, just follow me on, at, on Instagram at Vibrant World. Awesome. Follow her, follow her, follow her. And you all follow <laughs> me on Instagram at Terpene Trap Queen. So that's T-E-R-P-E-N-E, Trap Queen. And we're going to have to talk about, I know y'all may be familiar or not with the terpenes. I know you are, sis, but we could have a whole nother discussion on the name Terpene Trap Queen and what that all means. But follow me there. Um, see everything that I do on there. Um, as far as writing, you can go to NicoleCallier.com, check out my work, my portfolio, and hit me up if you have any questions about media, journalism, cannabis, entrepreneurship, sales, like hit your girl up.